Show. Welcome to the Deshay Show. About eight months ago, I auditioned for Oprah Winfrey's contest to have your own TV show. And I didn't win, but that's okay because what I learned was that it was really fun and I really want to have my own show. So, um, trying to decide what I wanted to do, I thought, what do I love? And I love beauty and fashion and art, and I really love inspirational stories. So this first episode is about the sweet spot. It's about Suzanne Kingsbury and how she's an accomplished author and how she's living her dream um, and she's in her sweet spot so I hope you enjoy it hi this is Deshay Peacock and this is the first episode of the Deshay show and I'm sitting here with Suzanne Kingsbury I'm so glad to be here and we're in her salon is it your writing salon it is my writing salon and it's as you can see it's beautiful <laughs> and I'm so happy to be sitting here with you. Mm. So I picked Suzanne because I think that she represents the sweet spot. The sweet spot is really when you feel like you are living your life with rich meaning mm. and that you are living the life you're supposed to, your higher purpose. I call it the higher purpose. I'm always questioning myself, you know, what am I supposed to be doing here on earth? Mm. Um, how can I best utilize the talents and skills that I've been given on this earth to to help myself but also other people. So somebody might say you're living your dream. You're living your your dream and you're happy and it. That to me that's the sweet spot. So Suzanne, you are a multi-talented woman. You are author of two books, you are a writer, an editor, you've traveled all over the world. Tell me, do you feel like you are living in your sweet spot? Yes. I feel definitely that I'm living in my sweet spot. I feel really lucky, actually. Um, but I think there's a lot of intention in terms of, you know, sort of when we look at other people's lives, there's a sense of like, oh, she was really lucky, or, you know, things sort of fell into her lap. Or, But when I think back to, to even, you know, things like the Fulbright Scholarship or, or the book, the first book, um, which have launched my career, or you know, just pretty much everything. There was a real intention to, um, you know, there's a lot of planning and sort of asking myself what I wanted and a lot of, um, you know, Julia Cameron always says, you know, pray hard for what you want, but then run as fast as you can to get it. You know, mm -hmm. it's sort of like when I look back on my life, there was a lot of that, um, a lot of work, you know, a lot of work goes into getting what you want. And then it's beautiful. I mean, the work is beautiful, too. The journey's beautiful, too. But it definitely wasn't just sort of I sat in my sweet spot all my life, and here I am. I didn't know I wanted to be a writer. I went and got my um, astrological chart done at one point, and the woman said, you know, you have the finger of God in your chart, and it's around writing. And your whole life is going to be around writing. And at that point, I was really into, um, you know, I was in my early 20s. I was really into exploration and adventure and um, finding out, like, what is this world that we're in? You know, mm -hmm. I was traveling all the time. And um, and I didn't want to be a writer. I thought it was really lonely mm -hmm. and um, boring. I mean, I love books. I've always loved books. I'm a voracious reader, but I didn't want to sit and like, uh, you know, I wanted to dance. I wanted to do choreography. I wanted to, and I kept asking her like, are you sure I'm a writer? I mean, even though I'd always loved to write. And then um, as sort of fate would have it, I wound up going to this writing workshop and like falling in love with writing. I mean, it wasn't even just falling in love. It was like a compulsion to write mm -hmm. I, I couldn't stop writing and um and I w felt my joy when I wrote and so then I began sort of realizing that I that I needed to make plans in order that I could you know quit my job for a year and just just write you know get a little cabin somewhere in the woods and just see if I could do it <laughs> I read online that in 1999 you decided to quit your job and break your lease and move to Oxford Mississippi Tell me about that time in your life and what led to that decision. Well, I just turned 30 and um, at my 30th birthday party, someone said to me, now you only do what you love. Now you only make choices, you know, about what you love. Mm -hmm. So no duty anymore. And it really, st I mean, it was just sort of a funny thing to say, but it really struck me and I decided to make it my goal to only do what I loved. And that included getting rid of, um, 
a lot of things in my life Mm -hmm. for for one thing my my job um and in a way you know my relationship was wonderful but it wasn't what I wanted at the time and um I wanted to see the world you know I wanted to see like could I make this thing happen I had just written this novel it was a rough draft it was definitely in Mississippi I couldn't make it anywhere else and so I thought, okay, I'm going to go find my characters, drink some moonshine, and <laughs> hang out on some porches, and listen to some stories, and see the cotton fields, and then just went from there. I remember being on the road there, and my car was just like chock full of stuff, and I had these Vermont plates, and I think I was like in South Carolina or something, I was at a gas station, and this sort of beautiful black man came up to me, and he goes, you know what, I want to be you when I grow up. <gasps> <laughs> and I was like, okay, I know I'm on the right path now. It was risky, but it was also one of those things that it was like, I can't sit here. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't sit here all my life. I got to just go and do. I got to make a change and see mm-hmm. what's out there. And and it wasn't even really about the writing, although I was in love with the writing. And, you know, I really wanted to discover this book and see if I could sell it. But it was sort of like, I'm 30. I don't have a house. I don't have a lover. I mean, yeah, I collected them along the way, but (laughs) at that point, I didn't have a lover. So I just felt like, you know, it's time. Mm -hmm. And I saved. I mean, from the moment I went to that workshop and I fell in love with writing, was addicted to it, I saved and saved for that year. It wasn't like I started writing, I fell in love with it, and I quit my job. It was like... I sort of knew at that point that I was a good writer. I mean, good enough to do something with it, you Mm -hmm. know, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, But it wasn't as if I was just sort of writing bad stories in the first two weeks that I fell in love with writing and I quit my job. And I think that's a big thing, too, is Mm -hmm. sort of, you know, okay, you have this idea that you want to quit your job, but, you know, is this actually sustain? Is this actually something that's going to sustain you over seven years, or are you going to lose interest and want to do massage instead, which is fine. Yeah. You know, but for me, that's what I've noticed in my life is, like, even with my husband, you know, like, I couldn't stop thinking about the guy for 10 years, and I thought, all right, well, it's sustaining itself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I might as well get married. <laughs> so maybe that's part of it. I don't know what sustains us, you know. Can you tell me how it felt to have your first novel published? Well, this is probably going to surprise you, and it's probably not the answer most people want, but it didn't feel that good, actually. It was uncomfortable to me because my my intention for that year was to be free, to follow these characters, to live in my imagination, to find out what the South was like, to drink moonshine, you know, mm-hmm. to hang out dancing at midnight in a cotton field. And when I sold the book, it was like I was back in this, you know, limited, strictured world of publishing and deadlines and like book tour and people were talking very fast. And I just felt that all of a sudden it was getting taken away from me. Mm -hmm. You know, that freedom, that Mm -hmm. feeling of bliss that I had when I wrote was Mm -hmm. suddenly had become this marketable. um, So people you know, really like that idea of getting a book published. Mm -hmm. And in fact, for me, it was the first time in my life that I'd ever been depressed. I went back down to to Mississippi and I basically holed up in my friend Johnny Little's house. He never never asked questions. He was this old, old Mississippi guy that I lived in his guest room. And I just like read and I was confused and this is my goal and doesn't feel good and and trying to get back to the sweet spot, really.